And that's what, honestly, that's what I see when I think about the, the Easter bunny and the eggs. You've diminished what Jesus has done. You've diminished the fact that he was beaten. You diminished the fact that not only was he beaten, but he was beaten with a cat nine tail, which had, you know, nails in it. You've diminished the fact that while he was on that cross, if anyone has ever done a study or research on crucifixion, Jesus suffocated. He, his last breath was literally his last breath. He suffocated. They nailed him to the cross so he wouldn't be able to really pull himself up to kind of gasping for air. When you nail a person's feet and you nail their hands, when you tie them, they're able to kind of push themselves up on that, on that tree to kind of gasp for air. Jesus wasn't able to do that. Welcome to the Call by God podcast with Adney Godet and myself, Nixon Sylvain. This show is about dialogues of biblical characters and testimonies of Christians who submitted to the will of God. Each week, we bring on one guest so that they can share their story of how they were called by God. I hope this show inspires you. Enjoy. Hello, world. Welcome to the Call by God podcast. I'm your host, uh, Brother Nick, and I'm here with Sister Adney. Today, we're going to do a special episode. I know many of you guys, uh, many. Um, obviously goes to church on Sunday. Some may call it Easter Sunday. But I know today is Monday. Uh, I hope all of you all was revived and really kind of gave it thought of what the resurrection really means uh, to humanity. So, Adney, I'm excited to do this episode. How are you doing? I'm doing good, Brother Nick. I'm doing good, just in a completely different space, spiritually, Um really understanding what it means to follow Christ wholeheartedly and him actually teaching me what it means to follow him wholeheartedly. And through his word, through meditation, prayer, mentors, it has been, it has been a journey. There's been some breaking, there's been some um, releasing, there's been some crying, there's just been a, a lot of just different things that definitely needed to take place. How are you doing? I am blessed. I am blessed. As I said, Adi, I'm excited. So, you know, whenever you get an opportunity to talk about Jesus, and I don't think we ever done this before. Um, in the past, we did a whole series, like every December, we do a whole series boasting and bragging about our Lord Jesus. So for us to do it like in April, and I think, Adney, this should be the tradition. We should do it <laughs> every April. And also December. I mean, we talk about Jesus throughout the whole year on this podcast because that's what this podcast all, is all about. But just zoom in and focus on our Lord. I mean, it is a blessing. So uh, please, uh, listeners, or if you're new listeners, thank you again for listening. We ask that you continue to subscribe, share, and like. And also, if you don't feel it's going to be a blessing to you, share it with somebody that you think it'll benefit. So, Adney, we're just going to get right into it. We want to talk about the resurrection. You want to talk about the resurrection, Adney? The resurrection. You want to talk about the resurrection. No, I said that's the reason we're Christians, because of the resurrection. <laughs> so if we don't talk about it, then <laughs> if we don't talk about it, then we got some issues. You know, out of all the other gods that are in the world, false gods, Jesus Christ, the real God, was the only God that raised himself from the dead. Ain't that powerful? Not even death. Not even death could have contained him. Not even. So for me, just reading about Jesus or, or even his resurrection, it's emotional sometimes. Because when you think about um, how man is, is fallible and, and we're, we're all broken because of our sinful nature. And when we think about the magnitude of what Jesus Christ did for us and all of humanity, I don't think people really kind of like understand that like if if it wasn't for jesus we were all bound to hades we would have been dead we would have been like walking zombies right with no savior a sheep without a shepherd <laughs> we would have been we would have been all over the place no sense of direction no sense of purpose so that's why i add it for me I, I get emotional just thinking about um of what uh, of jesus resurrection 
And also, Adney, too, I want to mention this before we read the chapter. I don't know. This just came to me. So you remember, like, you know, every Good Friday. I don't know if that happened to you when you was a kid because, you know, we was all brought up Catholic. And our parents used to make fish. I don't know where they get this fish tradition from, but, like, on Fridays they used to make fish. And I can remember, Adney, when I was a kid, we used to watch this movie uh, called The Ten Commandments. It's a very, very old movie. They used to always play on ABC, so I'm 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 highlighting ABC right now. So if y'all haven't watched it, y'all, y'all can go back and watch it. And it was a really pretty decent movie. Adam. It was the Ten Commandments of how Moses came about and how the children of Israel was in slavery. But don't you know that was all God's plan? Because God was God was forming a nation that He would come through so that the whole world would be saved. And now that I'm I'm not gonna say my age, <laughs> now that I'm mature. Now that I'm mature, um, I understand now what God was trying to convey, even through the the Old Testament, that that movie. I think it's called the Old Testament, where Moses parted the Red Sea and he went to Pharaoh. He, God told Moses to go to Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go. And Pharaoh's heart was hard and he didn't want to let God's people go. You remember that movie, Adney? Or it's just me? <laughs> it's just <laughs> I sure do remember the movie. I, I'm try, I was trying to remember the name of the actor that they had play him. Um, but yes, in every single Haitian household, <laughs> in every single Haitian household. I, I watched that movie with my So I would recommend you watch The Prince of Egypt with him instead of that movie. Because The Prince of Egypt is more of an animated version of it. And it'll be more to his understanding. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Like Devon loves the Prince of Egypt. You know huh? your nephew is grown, right? I you know, know he's grown. grown. I know. I, he thinks he's I grown. Know, he but this one right school. here, he will like because it will show. It really depicts the whole um, yeah. entire part of um, the uh, the children of Israel coming out of slavery by by that by Moses being used as the as the man of God to lead them out of straight slavery and, and the, the Passover and, and just everything. It's just so beautiful. Your, your nephew loves it. Like that's one of his favorite movies. Yeah. A brother sent me that movie. So that's confirmation. And um, I'll definitely um, watch that one. Son. But I want to say this before we uh, read the resurrection to Adney. God, Jesus didn't only come for black people. Jesus did not only come for black people. Jesus did not only come for white people. Jesus came for humanity. Jesus came to save the whole world, that he that believeth in him should not perish. Jesus came for everybody. But you must first believe, repent, confess, be baptized for the remission of your sins. I thought I'd add that because I don't want somebody saying, oh, yeah, yeah, he's talking about Israel. Yeah, he's talking about the black people. Yeah, we all say No, no, Jesus Christ came for all of humanity. But, Adney, go ahead and read. Uh, uh, we're going to read the resurrection on one Sunday morning. <laughs> Matthew 28 verse 1 Matthew 28 verse 1 says early on Sunday morning and I'm reading from the NLT Bible early on Sunday morning as the new day was dawning Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb suddenly there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven rolled aside the stone and sat on it his face shone like lightning and his clothing was white was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said he just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body was laying. And now go quickly and tell his disciple that he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, (laughs) but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him, grasped his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee and they will see me there. Hallelujah. I like how you said one early on Sunday morning. So, Adney, this is powerful. So, 
Jesus Christ already predicted all of this. I mean, Jesus Christ, when he was on earth and he, he really showed acts as though he was superior and that he was God. Like there, there was no question. I mean, he came, he saved folks. Jesus Christ was healing people. Jesus Christ sent out some disciples to do ministry work. He was casting out devils and even the devils uh, recognized him. You know, even the devils, when he cast out the legion. So the reason why I wanted to talk about the resurrection, because Adney, it is the blood. It is the sacrifice. Um, number one, we got to understand the series of steps that took place. Um, the children of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, of bashing Jesus. Jesus Christ was doing his earthly ministry, and they was bashing him, saying, oh, you're not God, you're blasphemy, you're this and that. That when Jesus Christ was getting whipped and when he was getting spit on, um, that was supposed to be us. And even to the point where he was carrying that cross and Simon, you know, assisted him. But still that, that what I've been told that that cross is kind of heavy. And then they mocked him. And, um, and we're talking about God here. We, we talk about his own creation. Uh, mocked him, spat on him, whooped him in, and put him on the cross and nailed him to the cross. They didn't just put him on the cross. They nailed him uh, to the cross. And even it even went so far that even a thief on the cross even mocked him. Um, obviously, uh, another one was like, okay, that is God. Like, Kind of like, hey, dude, like, chill on now. That's God. But we had even a thief, somebody that was on the verge of dying, Adney, even mocked him. That's how low that it got, right? And then uh, obviously they, they, um, uh, a, a soldier took a spear and, and put it right in him, and, and out came blood and water. And then um, he, he cried out. He cried out, you know, when he was on the cross for hours. He cried out and um, he gave up the ghosts. And then that was it for our Lord. And, uh, and, and Adney, I can't imagine the things that was going on in that day, like especially the people that Jesus Christ, his disciples rather, the one that was with him all along, and they all scattered. Not one stood up for him, especially Peter. Peter's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to be there for you, Lord. But Peter denied Jesus Christ three times. So... Jesus Christ's body was taken into a, a burial uh, site. And, and we're not talking about the cemetery. So we're not talking about the modern age, the United States, the Western way of doing things at it. We're not talking about six feet deep. So Jesus Christ did not go six feet deep. Uh, our preacher uh, recently went to Jerusalem, Israel. And then the way that they bury individuals is way different than we bury folks here in the United States. So I heard there were stones, these heavy, heavy, these stones weigh tons. You got to roll it up, put the body in there. And, and it took more, like a lot of men to kind of like roll the stones. So the text that you just read of, of the angel giving a message uh, to the sisters. <laughs> it's always the sisters, man. Y'all sisters really, really love the Lord, man. I, I, <laughs> I got to say, y'all sisters really love the Lord. But the angel gave the sister a message and, and, and said, hey, go tell the disciples that he is risen. And that alone, Adney, gives me goosebumps because if we if you visualize what I just mentioned earlier about him getting whooped and being bled and being on a nail to the cross and like that's it. If a, a regular a uh, mortal man go through a situation like that, he will not rise from an earthly standpoint. So we talking about God himself that rose, as I mentioned, that death couldn't even hold him down. So Adney, I, I, want, you, I want you to share with, with maybe me or maybe our audience, like, what is this misconception that people have with uh, Jesus and Easter? You know how they be trying to put the egg and the bunny in it, like it all mixed together. Like I, I still could never, I, I could never understand it to this day. So the research I've been doing, not just um, reading, but also with my spiritual father, has been um, 
there is a goddess, the goddess Diana, the goddess of fertility that um, where was worshipped back then. And when you think about the Easter bunnies, most people um, do not, if they pay attention to bunnies, bunnies are very fertile. <laughs> and, and, you know, as soon as they do, they get pregnant and they're not having just one or two. They're having a whole, a whole litter of, of rabbits. And then you look at the egg. And my spiritual father yesterday shared with me, he said, what does the egg represent? And I was like, uh, he said, that's the period. That is what is, is to be fertilized to, you know, give birth. So I'm like, so how does man correlate Jesus is dying on the cross with the Easter bunny and some eggs? And it all comes from Catholicism. It all comes from paganism. It is all a pagan thing. We as man, we as human beings, if it doesn't have something that piques our attention, we're not drawn to it. But if you think about it, the moment the month of March or February rolls around and you go into the store, what's the first thing you see? Eggs and rabbits. That's what piques everyone's attention. You're not going to walk into a store for you to see, you know, wooden crosses and all this other good stuff. You're going to see eggs and rabbits. And I'm like, they've diminished what the death, burial and resurrection has been to please the senses of man. Because it's what the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. The pride of life says, I don't need Jesus. And that's what, honestly, that's what I see when I think about the, the Easter bunny and the eggs. You've diminished what Jesus has done. You've diminished the fact that he was beaten. You diminished the fact that not only was he beaten, but he was beaten with a cat knife heel, which had, you know, nails in it. You've diminished the fact that while he was on that cross, if anyone has ever done a study or research on crucifixion, Jesus suffocated. He, his last breath was literally his last breath. He suffocated. They nailed him to the cross so he wouldn't be able to really pull himself up to kind of gasping for air. When you nail a person's feet and you nail their hands, when you tie them, they're able to kind of push themselves up on that, on that tree to kind of gasp for air. Jesus wasn't able to do that because it's like the nails locked him in place. He did that for us. And when he gave up that ghost, like to me, to diminish what he did is, is to, is, is, it's, it's disrespectful. It's really, truly disrespectful. And I say it's disrespectful because when I, as a human being, as a person who obeyed the gospel and is learning from the jump what I should have learned, which is love the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind and with all my strength. And I see the behaviors and the things that I've done in this body right after baptism. I've been extremely disrespectful to what Jesus has done. And not only Jesus, and this is something I had to learn as well. He's like, the study I've been doing with my, my spiritual father is all three felt what Jesus went through. So our heavenly father felt those beatings. The Holy Spirit felt that because all three bear record. They're three in one. So every time we do something that is outside the scope and the realm of who, who they are, their nature, we're disrespecting them. So to look at the resurrection and to see Easter eggs and bunnies, there's, there's no correlation. There's no correlation whatsoever. It is all about fulfilling our fleshly desires, getting dressed on Sunday morning, sorry, excuse me, on Saturday, going to get your hair done, going to get your nails done, going to get you a whole brand new dress to go to worship on Sunday, which you haven't been to in like months, years. But this day is a day that you culminate as something great when you haven't even honored him in any way, shape or form.
That's disrespectful. There is no person I know on this time side of life, if, there's in a, if they're in a relationship with someone that wants to be a fly-by-night relationship where you come and see me only on a certain day because to you it's a special day. When I've done so much for you, I've died for you. I let people disrespect me for you. I could have called 12 legions of angels, but I chose not to for you. I took on the stripes that you were supposed to take. My body was beaten, bruised, and broken for you. And all you can do is give me one day. So that's that's what I had to learn as I was looking at this research that I was doing. It just I just summed it up to this one thing. It's just disrespectful. Easter, the term Easter itself is disrespectful. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you for making it midway through this episode. We want to take a moment to sincerely thank each and every one of you who have been supporting our show. Your encouragement and positive feedback mean the world to us. We want to continue to bring you inspiring and thought-provoking content each week, and that's where we need your help. We kindly ask you to support our podcast by clicking on the link provided in the description below. Your support will enable us to grow, reach a wider audience, and continue to produce the quality content you enjoy. We truly appreciate your support and value your contribution to the Call by God podcast. Together, let's inspire and uplift others in their faith journey. Thank you once again for your continued support, and we look forward to bringing you more enlightening episodes in the future. God bless. Yep. And I don't even want to go in depth in terms of Easter, because even the passage that you just read, there's no mention of eggs and bunnies. Right. So we see the series of events that took place. You know, these are sisters. (laughs) I say sisters. (laughs) Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. So imagine they're going to the tomb and they see a a being that don't even belong here. He's a he's a heavenly being. Right. They're having a conversation with a heavenly being, an angel. And the angel said, uh, he's not here. Um, he's not here. He has risen. And the angel, obviously, like I said earlier, uh, gave them a message to say, yeah, go tell the disciples that he has risen. And um, that they did. They went ahead and told the message to the, the brothers. Man, y'all, I got to always mention this, Adney. Sisters, y'all sisters, man, y- 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 y'all phenomenal. When it comes to the Lord, I mean, you know, I don't want to take away from y'all brothers especially the brothers that's on fire for the Lord. But I just got to give a shout out to the sisters. When sisters get a message from the Lord, <laughs> y'all go and y'all take off with it, man. And that's why it's probably by design. There's always more women in the church than dudes. Hey, brothers, y'all need to step up. Y'all need to step up. But, Addy, I want to go to the part where the sisters did mention they, they shared the message with the disciples. And um, verse number nine and ten. And this is where this is this is the part that 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 kind of like near and dear to my heart. And it says, and I'm going to read it in the same version. And it says, and as they went, Jesus met them. So this is now they get a visual, like this dude is alive. Our God is alive. Then Jesus, it, yeah, it says that um, Jesus met them and greeted them, and they ran to him. You could imagine just running to your Lord. <laughs> They ran to him, okay, and he grasped and grabbed his feet and worshipped him. They worshipped God. I just, I'm, I'm trying to picture it in my mind, like wh- what took place, the series of events that took place. They went ahead and did what the angel told them to do, and then they met with the Lord. The Lord greeted them, and they bowed down and they worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee and they will see me there. So not only that Jesus Christ resurrected, and if we keep on reading all the way into Acts, Jesus Christ was with the people for 40 days. So he showed his presence, you know, of course, if we go according to our calendar, Jesus was with the people for like a month and some change. So it's not like he resurrected. And by, bye, I'm going back to glory. 
Like, that's some powerful stuff. That's some boss stuff. That's what they would say, like, in a modern world. That's some boss stuff, like, I'm God and I know what I did for my people. Not only that I'm going to resurrect, but I'm going to hang out with my people for a little bit. That says a lot about God. Because God could have easily been like, you know what, I resurrected and let me go back to glory. Like, give him a message. He could have said, hey, go over there to Jerusalem, wait for the promise to come on high. But Jesus Christ was with his people for some 40 days, and then he went up. What are your thoughts on the resurrection? Any additional thoughts? I, I, I love how he took them back to where they met in Galilee. That's where it all began. So let me go ahead and take y'all back to where we all started. So that way you can understand what this is all about. Like he took them back to where it all started on the Sea of Galilee. And it's just so beautiful. It's like God is purposeful. And every single thing that God does, God doesn't try. And I need us to understand this. Stop saying that God tries. God is doing. We try. And if we would stop trying and paying attention to what he says and what he's doing, we would understand that he doesn't try to do anything. He's already doing it. Jesus told the sisters, like you say, to go tell his brothers, meet me in Galilee, where it all started, where it all began. That's powerful. And I'm saying to that sister, I'm saying to that brother, if you have fallen away from Christ, go back to where it all began. Go back to where it all started. There is a reason you said yes to Jesus. Remember that. I'm saying to a married, a, a married man and a married woman whose relationship is on a rock. Go back to where it all started because it has a genesis, that foundation. Take it back to that moment. But most importantly, that person that is seeking for Jesus. If you don't know him, go back to the word. It will show you where it all began for you. There's always some place to go back to that will show you the love of your savior that will show you the depths, not just the love, but the depths of his love, not just his love, but the love of God for man and humanity. Go back because sometimes when you go back, you are reintroduced to your first love. Amen. Amen. So I, I think that's about it. Addy. You know, when it comes to talking about Jesus, we could go on for a long time. But I just I just wanted to like give like snapshots of what the resurrection means to me and what it means to you and the way that the world should view it. It's it's not about the yellow bunny or the, the eggs and and I hope that someone out there kinda like it enlightened them, be like, you know what? Adney and Nick made sense. Let me let me focus on Jesus. And what I what I do wanna say is that uh every Lord's Day, Sunday, uh we honor Jesus Christ and we we honor the death the burial, and the resurrection. And that's what we come together with the fellowship, the communion, the Lord's Supper, um, because it, it gives us a sense we remember what Jesus Christ has done for us on Calvary. So we don't only wait until Easter Sunday to commemorate his death, burial, and resurrection. We do this every Sunday, ongoing, 52 times a week throughout the year. What he did for us was so powerful and he expects us to do the same thing because there's a death, there's a bur burial and a resurrection with Christ and also with us. So there's a death and there's a burial and there's a resurrection with us. And I'm not, if you want to go ahead and read some scriptures, read the gospels, right? I could give some specific scriptures, but just read the gospels. You can read Romans, Romans chapter six, you can read uh, Acts chapter 2, or, or Acts as a whole, because Acts is the first church, the first ministry. So I'm not going to give any specific scriptures, because me giving one scripture, that doesn't paint the whole picture. Um, so I would rather somebody just go ahead and read the gospel and get to know about Jesus Christ themselves. So I'm just so thankful for this episode, Addy. I think that's, that's about it. But again, 
new listeners, we want to thank you again for listening. And Adney, we're global. We're global. Uh, we're making a great, great impact on people's lives. And first of all, I want to give glory to God for that. And don't you know our second, um, the second country, well, our top listeners are, are, are from the United States. And the second most is from uh, Ghana, Ghana, Africa. So I'm going to give a shout out to Africa because I remember at one point in time, Africa wasn't even on our list. And But also, we just want to just thank everybody, no matter where you're from. I know I could give shout outs to Europe, Asia, uh, Russia, uh, Australia, uh, Puerto Rico, the islands, the Virgin Islands, Bahamas, Haiti. But we just love all people, and we believe that we are all created in an image of God. So remember that Jesus Christ, he's the King of Kings. There's no other God like him. Remember what I said in the top of the show. There's no other God that has risen from the dead but Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only God that has been risen, has risen. So remember that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings, and he's the Lord of Lords. Be blessed. That's it for now. But before we go, please continue to listen, subscribe, and share our podcast. Also, if you want to support our show, please scroll down to the bottom of the show notes and click on the link that says buy me a coffee. We would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for listening. And remember, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And also, Jesus Christ loves you. Thank you. Wait, there's more. What if today was your last day on earth? Would you be ready to meet your maker? Well, Jesus Christ has given us the good news. He told his disciples in Mark 16, 15, 16, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Jesus Christ has instructed his children to share and preach the gospel, which is the good news, which means that Jesus Christ came and that he was sacrificed. He was buried and he rose on the third day by believing and by repenting and confessing and being baptized. You will be saved. So it is your choice. Jesus Christ will not force you. You've heard the message. You heard personal testimonies. But this is your opportunity to give your life to Christ. Don't wait until tomorrow, because tomorrow is not promised. So I hope you submit to the will of God and give your soul to Christ. Be blessed.